Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and this week we are back on the Al Ferrari doing some finishing touches. All right, guys, welcome back. And um, those of you who don't know, this is the Al Ferrari. This is my 1973 Alfa Romeo GTV that I swapped in a 2000 model Ferrari 360 V8 engine. If you missed it, I'll put a link up above to the last video I worked on this. And um, as always, do the things like and subscribe and comment. All of that stuff helps out that crazy algorithm. Now. Where we left off on the Alfa Ferrari, I'm getting close to getting plates on it, but there's still little bits of paperwork that I'm still waiting on, so it is still not technically registered yet. It's close, it's very, very close, but still not there yet. Um, but there is still some bits and pieces that I need to finish off inside the car. We still don't have um, the vent fans connected up yet. That's still something I need to play around with. Um, I have no interior of the glove box and uh, the cruise control is not actually set up yet. So uh, let me take in the car now and show you what my plans are moving forward on this stuff today. So the interior of the Al Ferrari is looking good but there are a few things that I need to finish off. Um, I am not 100% happy with the fit of this center console piece here. I'm not entirely happy with the fit of this center console piece here. It just never fit perfectly. And the finish of this wood grain never worked out the way I wanted. You can see it sort of cracked up here. And it just, I wanted to make it out of real wood. And uh, I think that was a mistake. It just, uh, yeah, it just doesn't work and doesn't look as good as what I hoped it would. Uh, another thing is I have a glove box that is all just open inside and there is uh, vent pipes and all sorts of stuff in there that uh, is not finished. But the first thing I want to have a look at today is um, this hole over here. Now I think this had the, um, the choke and something else uh, on the original car and I thought that is going to be a perfect spot to put my cruise control controls. Because I don't have a traditional cruise control stalk my idea is I'm going to have, uh, I got this switch and this is going to be the set and resume switch and then a button as a cancel. And all this is going to sit up somehow like uh, sort of this in here. So I need to make a panel that's going to fit in there and hold these switches and just look neat and tidy. All right, so for those of you who've been following for a while now will know that uh, I've been... 3D printing for a few years. I uh, 3D printed the grills here for the Al Ferrari and, uh, and a bunch of other little bits and pieces. The issue I've always had with my 3D printer and it seems like most 3D printers is that you're buying a hobby and I really just want a tool. The issue with the old 3D printers is that they constantly require tinkering to get the perfect results and you've got to be continually going in and leveling the bed and making all of these adjustments to uh, the different materials and stuff like that and playing around with it. And you can get good results with some of these 3D printers, but I just want something that works and does what it's supposed to do. And uh, that is where this week's video sponsor is gonna come in very handy, which is Bamboo Labs. And uh, they contacted me and I was very excited to get a new 3D printer that actually does what it's supposed to do. The biggest thing I can say is that this is a tool. You send your information to the printer and it does everything. It sets itself up, it does its self-leveling, it does all of the filament changes and all that sort of stuff. It actually has a holder that holds four different reels of filament and you can pr print in multiple different colors and it will actually change colors as it goes. It is mind boggling how much better it is than what I've been used to. So what I'm gonna do today is uh, go through and uh, start making up a bunch of different pieces for the interior, starting with this cruise control switch. So um, I did a little bit of CAD last night and sort of designed up a rough shape 
that's going to go into that slot. So this is um, my first draft of the holder that I printed out. It fits the button and the switch quite nicely. And uh, yeah, so I've got my up and down switch. You can see it actually doesn't quite fit. It's too wide, so I'm going to have to modify that. Um, the profile seems like it's pretty good and you can sort of see here there's a couple of holes down the bottom that can screw into the back here to lock it in. Um, I might want to actually put a tab on the top here so it can lock in underneath here and hold it in nicely. Uh, so I think it needs a little bit of modification. Also the switch, the hole I put in is a little bit loose so uh, I'll tighten up that hole a little bit and let's uh, do some modifications, do another test print and uh, see how it comes out. So here I am modifying the design, I sort of cut it in half and narrow it up and also you sort of change the location of the switch plate and add some font and things like that to really make it look nice and neat. And then I send it to the printer and print it out of PLA just as a test print. Now I could have printed it flatter but I wanted to try and keep the face plate horizontal for the font and uh, that didn't quite work and I slightly messed it up and it was still off to one side so that's why there's a lot of support material etc and you can see these layer lines but uh, that'll be sorted in the final print. So okay well, I'm really happy with how that uh, came out and I'm actually printing the final version out of ASA now that's uh, going to withstand the temperatures a little bit better and uh, that's the handy thing about the bamboo blades. I've got the app with the camera in the machine and I can actually see how it's going from anywhere and, uh, and pause, stop the print. I can uh, sort of monitor it the whole time. I am really over the moon with the Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon. It is just such a game changer for my 3D printing. It makes stuff so much easier. So Bamboo Labs are running their best deals ever for Black Friday sales, so make sure you check out my affiliate link in the description. Check it out, help out the guys that help out the channel. And uh, I've still got a lot more 3D printing to do, so let's uh, move on to the glove box. All right, so the next thing I need to tackle is the glove box. Now, at the moment, you open it up, and there's just a big hole here, and it goes through, and you've got the uh, vent tubes and uh, sort of a bunch of stuff. Now, this is the original uh, insert for the glove box, and it no longer works. It's, it's way too big, and to modify it would be a lot of work and a bit of a pain. But what I have got is I've got the 3D printer and uh, I have already done some, um, some basic little cardboard templates from the inside which are scanned into the computer and then um, I sort of drew them out as a, uh, as a vector format and then sort of 3D printed these little panels that are basically the same size as what is here and I am doing some tests to see how it sort of works as far as being my new glove box goes. And I'm reasonably happy with the, the rough design of this at the moment. So that's the template. Now I need to start making it look a little bit prettier and sort of finish it up a bit and work out exactly how big I want to make it. And then we can start 3D printing something else. So first I do a bit of measuring and just get a rough idea of how much depth etc I've got for the glove box and then using the old glove box as a bit of a template I can start building my CAD model. And then it's off to the 3D printer. Alright so it's the next morning and the print has been going uh, flat out uh, overnight and I have half of the glove box now. Uh, the size of the printer bed, it can do 256 by 256 by 256 millimeters, which is not enough to print the entire glove box in one piece, but that is why I designed it with a, a flange halfway and bolting points. And I'm also gonna use some um, acetone around the edges to, uh, to sort of help melt the ASA and help sort of glue it together, basically. Um, the uh, You can really see that there is there's very little in the way of layer lines and stuff like that. Like it, it, it prints very, very smoothly and cleanly. And uh, that brings me to the other part, which uh, I am extremely happy with, is my cruise control switch. So if you can see there, look at how neat that is. And uh, I used the grey AESA for the, uh, the, the letters, so it's actually printed in the grey. It changes the colour and prints the different colours. So that is fantastic. So let's uh, stick it in the car and see what the finished piece looks like. Yeah. 
That is fantastic. I am absolutely, I love that. There's the, uh, yeah, the switch and the button. Perfect cruise control. That is exactly what I wanted. And it blends into the dash with all the other black pieces. It just looks like it was part of the original car. Oh, that is fantastic. So unfortunately to make the cruise control work, I have to do the tedious bit as well, which is the wiring, but it's really not that difficult with the Link ECU. It's uh, only a few wires and then it's all ready to go. All right, well, I realized there was an error in my design because there's a lump in the bottom of the glove box mount here. So I had to cut this piece out of my 3D print, but this took 10 hours to print. So I want to try and use it if I can. And um, what I can do is if I stick this in, this sits in very, very nicely. And there is half of a glove box. That is really nice. Now I need to make sure I've got room for all of the, um, uh, the tubes and stuff. So this is gonna basically, this other part is gonna come across at like a 45 degree angle. Uh, so there's not gonna be uh, a huge glove box, but it's still better having a glove box than having no glove box. And uh, yeah, when this is uh, when I hold this in place, I can hold it there, and and uh, the glove box will close. So that is going to be perfect. And I actually have a uh, a glove box that I can use. So I need to alter my design slightly on the second half, and let's send that to print, and uh, we can move on to something else. All right, the cruise control is wired up. Uh, the glove box is being printed, so we're working on that in the background. While I continue on, one of the last sort of major jobs that I need to finish is the boot of the our Ferrari. Basically, um, it has not been finished and I want to make it look sort of nice and neat and tidy, which is uh, going to be a little bit of work. So I need to make up some panels that I can cover in leather, carpet, and just make it look nice and pretty. So uh, let's start mocking that up with some cardboard and uh, transferring that to aluminium and see what we can come up with. So first up, I take some very rough measurements just to get the ballpark idea of what I need to build. And unfortunately, it is too big to fit in my guillotine. It's too long, so uh, I have to do the cuts by hand. It's also too long for this terrible brake that I have. I know I complain about this all the time, and it's definitely better than having no brake, but uh, not a lot. <laughs> Basically, I'm just using it to get sort of the initial bend in this piece, and uh, then a lot of it I'm ending up doing it on the bench. So these notches I had to cut out is to actually fit it into this brake. It doesn't actually fit that length without cutting those notches in. So uh, yeah, it is struggling to do what it needs to do and uh, I need an upgrade, but I also need a bigger shop to be able to fit something bigger. You can see here that I realized I couldn't do the bend I needed to do, so I just did it by hand on a table. You can see there that I just marked out by hand with a texture to get the shape that I want and trim it to shape and now sort of fitting the hole for the latch. A little bit of hand tweaking to get everything to sort of line up quite nicely and it's actually quite a good shape. All right, that was a lot of work to get this panel in and uh, it's looking pretty good. It's nice and solid and uh, I had to spend a lot of time thinking about how everything is gonna go together. So basically what I wanna have in the boot here is I wanna have a panel on the back, a panel here, and then a panel at either end and then carpet on the bottom. Now, I wanna fix these panels front and back in and then these side panels are going to have to screw into these panels here because there's nowhere else to screw. I can't screw through the paintwork itself. So uh, if I make a panel that screws into um, the, uh, the tabs that I put here, that will give me some sort of structure in the boot. So uh, let's, now we've got one panel done. That was a lot of work. Time to start making the rear panel. So 
So again, you can see this is a really long piece. It doesn't really fit in my break. So I'm going through, I just sort of broke the edge with the break. And now just hand folding it over on the bench with a hammer and dolly. So with the initial shape, I have to mark out and make some clearance for the hinges. And then I drill a hole for the battery cutoff switch and gradually work my way through marking out where I need a clearance for the fuel tank mounting bolts. All right, I am really happy with how this is coming together. So I have the rear panel in and I have the forward bulkhead in. It covers over my battery fuel tank uh, and uh, still has the battery cutoff coming through, which is great. Now, before I do these ends, uh, I want to make sure that they're sort of square. So this side has got to be bent inwards to give some sort of attachment point to the sides. But I don't want to do that uh, until I have the floor done. So that's my next thing is I'm not really happy with how flat this floor is because I made the panel and then it's been welded on a bunch of times as a big flat panel. It's a bit warped and undulated, which is definitely not up to the standard that I like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some marine ply, a thin piece of marine ply to A, um, level the floor out, but also B, sort of give me a spot to recess for some of these bolts and stuff so that when I put it in, it's, it's nice and flat and then carpet is nice and flat in the back and it looks neat and tidy. So, so for this bit, I'm going to use a cardboard template. Uh, I really like this RAM board for cardboard templating. It's uh, You get it from hardware stores designed to protect flooring, but I find it sort of really good for this purpose. And I just take my time and go backwards and forwards and trim and tweak until I'm happy with the shape. When I've got my final shape, I transfer it onto some plywood and then cut it roughly into shape with a circular saw and then go round with the jigsaw to do all the detail. Making sure I also leave room to clearance the mounting brackets for the fuel tank. All right, so you can see I've got my plywood panel down now. Um, it's uh, springing up a little bit on this end, mostly because it's just got a bit of a bow in it. And once it's got the carpet on it and this end trim, pa trim panel in, that'll sit down nicely. But this has got a, a much nicer, flatter floor and will also help me um, when I cut the carpet out. I can cut the carpet out straight and it will flow over the top of these bolts and stuff and you won't really notice them. So that it uh, will give the more of an impression of a nice flat floor. So I'm very happy with that. So now what I want to do is start making up these end panels. So let's back out with the RAM board again to make the templates for each end. Then transfer it onto the aluminium and these ones are small enough that I can use the guillotine which speeds things up a lot. And of course the other side. With the sides the way I want them, I removed the forward bulkhead and turned the edges so I have mounting tabs for the side panels. All right, I am very, very happy with the result of that. That is a very neat looking boot space. Um, all the panels fit really nicely. These panels here uh, will have some tabs on them to make them easier to pull out. But they do come out. And uh, yeah, they fit in quite nicely. So that is all a very nice, clean, square, flat fit. Um, I'll probably have a couple of mounting screws just up in the top corner. So they're reasonably hidden away and uh, same on the other side. So the whole thing is really neat. It'll just be a nice flat floor, nice carpeted boot with nice leather trim. That is exactly what I was looking for. I am very, very happy. And the boot still closes over the top and it looks super neat and tidy. And I just, I'm not gonna have time to trim the boot today, so I'm not even gonna try. But what I can have a look at is my finished glove box. So I've got the second half of the glove box now printed. So a total of almost 20 hours of printing. And we have an entire glove box. All right, so I just put a couple of screws into the glove box just to sort of hold it together well enough 
for uh, testing purposes. Uh, when I seal it up properly, I'm gonna use some acetone and bolt it together uh, finally so that it will actually stay in one solid piece. But uh, for the time being, I just wanna make sure that I can fit it in and, uh, and it will actually fit and do the job. Uh, not a huge glove box, but having a glove box is just so handy. Not having a glove box at all is such a pain. Um, if you guys remember Archie, I used to have a, uh, a, a 996 with no glove box, and it was a real pain in the backside. So I want somewhere to hold things. That looks fantastic. It's probably hard to see because it's black in a dark, uh, dark car, but that is fitting up quite nicely. Um, there is some space in there. It's not huge, but I'll be able to keep um, some basic, you know, documents and stuff in there, and uh, uh, a few bits and pieces. Just the sort of thing that I needed. Uh, I can tidy the rest of this up later uh, when I actually make some mounts. I've got to make some mounts that come off of where the factory mounts were, which are up under here, and uh, I'm going to have it so it screws in at the top on either side, and that locks it all into place. The bottom locks into the lip, and uh, it all closes and does what it's supposed to. All right, so the glove box is done. We have cruise control. We have most of the boot fitted out. I am very happy with the progress this week. Like there's lots of bits and pieces and jumping around all over the place, but it has really, uh, really started coming together. But we're definitely out of time. So um, I think that means it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, in 2022, Ferrari released its latest addition to the iconic Daytona range with the SP3. It was inspired by the iconic Ferrari 330 P4, which won in the 1967 24 Hours of Daytona. The 330 P4's rear air vents inspired the SP3's horizontal fins at the front and the rear. The SP3 is the first and probably the last naturally aspirated mid-mount V12 from Ferrari since the Enzo that didn't have hybrid assistance. The SP3 is built on the chassis of the La Ferrari Aperta and the 6.5 litre V12 is taken from the 812 Superfast, making it 130 horsepower at 9,500 RPM. As for the performance, well, it is more than fast enough and it is definitely the best looking Ferrari for a long time. There will only be 599 units produced at around 2.25 million US dollars each, if you are lucky enough to be able to buy one. <laughs> Sorry, and you got one microphone. We forgot yes, to bring the other one. I forgot to charge the other one, so uh, we're using the same mic. Well, as you know, Jeff, you do like to improvise. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, the our Ferrari is really coming along. Uh, I'm really happy with how that boot is and the uh, internal stuff, the cruise control and glove box and stuff. It's all coming together, uh, just sort of ticking off the last few little bits and pieces of uh, those minor details before I actually can get to use it. Yep. It's, uh, it's getting close, but um, back on the Frankenholler next week, I've got lots to do on that. I'm, I'm really, uh, really enjoying that build as well. Yeah, so stay, I was going to say stay tuned. I can, yeah. I think, that, I think I've got really bad hay fever and it seems to be affecting me quite badly. Crikey, <laughs> sorry. Um, like and subscribe, let Jeff know what you think. He loves, loves reading comments and um, see you yeah. next time. Oh, Patreon too, want to help him out. Yeah. Appreciate it. All right. Bye guys. See you guys the 1967 Daytona 24 Hours of Le Mans. No. <laughs> <laughs> 1967 24 Hours of Daytona, I know. The 330 P4's horizontal air vents inspired the SP3's. Also probably the first and last naturally aspirated rear mounted Ferrari from Enzo. Damn it, I was so close. I didn't even know, I was just, I was just saying words at that point. The SP3, the SP3, the, 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 the SP3 is built, no.